Hello, it's Dr. Diana Hoppe, and thank you for joining me for tonight's Facebook Live event. Tonight is Tuesday. Normally it's Thursday that I do these, but with the Indiegogo campaign that I'm doing, I'm going to be doing more Facebook Live events so that I can really get everyone motivated and excited about what I'm trying to do and what we're trying to do as a community. So thank you for joining me. I am Dr. Diana Hoppe. I am a board-certified OBGYN in San Diego, California. And I do Facebook Live events normally on Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Today is Tuesday, so it's a special treat. We're going to talk about something really interesting tonight. And I want to let everyone kind of join in, say where you're calling from. And also, if you have any questions as I move along, please, please feel free to ask them. I'll try to kind of coordinate as I go along so that I can address your questions. Just a little background on me. Uh, as I said, I'm an OBGYN. I just do GYN now, so no more babies, so I can sleep, which I love to sleep. So I love doing women's health. I love educating. I love being with all of you on these Facebook Live events, and um, I just love to do this. So let's start, and tonight we're going to talk about vaginal dryness and pain with, with sex. So I think many of you know that I wrote a book about women and sex drive, and it's called Healthy Sex Drive, Healthy You, What Your Libido Reveals About Your Life. And it goes into all the factors that affect women's libido. So what makes it go up, go down, and, and really the reason I wrote it is to reassure women that it's not crazy if you don't feel like you're having, you wanna have sex all the time. It's normal to have ups and downs. So totally normal, and I go into a lot of the factors. So that's the book I wrote, so feel free to buy that or get the ebook version, whatever works. So let's first start with some of the comments that I've had that patients have um, told me over the years about what it feels like to, oh, I just dropped something, sorry. Um, I have a lot of visuals tonight, so it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really fun, and thank you all who have joined. Great, Sherry, Nancy, Deanna, Michael, Darren, awesome. So some of the comments that I've had that patients have said to me is that when they have this kind of pain, it feels like knives are in their vaginal wall. Like it's like knives stabbing them inside. I've also had women say it feels like sandpaper, that the, it feels so rough and raw and it really hurts. One woman even told me, she said, I used to be Niagara Falls and now I'm like the Sahara Desert. So it's very interesting the different comments you get from women, but what's very kind of sad is I'm gonna give you some statistics about um, how many women are menopausal and how many actually seek treatment for this condition. So there's approximately 64 million postmenopausal women in the United States today, 64 million, all right? About half of those, or 32 million, will have symptoms of this, that is painful sex, uh, pain potentially with urinary tract, et cetera. So, but only 7%, 7% get treatment and seek treatment. And I'm gonna go over some of the reasons why that is, and then I'll go into some of the treatment options that you have. And really the goal of this is to educate, to give you guys the right information, accurate information, and be able to share it with your friends and colleagues and those that you think might need this, this information. So thank you everyone for joining. We've got Deborah, we've got Sherry, Larry, Awesome, we've got a lot of good people on tonight. So let me review about the statistics. There's 64 million postmenopausal women in the United States today. Approximately half, or 32 million, have symptoms of what we call vulval vaginal atrophy. It's a horrible term, and now they're changing it to be called, which is still a bad term, genital urinary symptoms of menopause. I don't know, but the terminology. Bottom line, it has to do with pain with sex due to vaginal dryness. And only 7% of women, of those postmenopausal women experiencing those symptoms, actually seek treatment. So that's really sad when you think about it because there's things we can do for this. And some of it is just lack of knowledge and lack of effort. And, and sometimes it's just, you know, I'm gonna go into the, the actual reasons because there's many why this is, that this is that there's only 7% of women who are getting treatment. Um, some women don't, first off, some women don't see that this might be a problem associated with menopause. 
so that they don't think the vaginal dryness is anything to do with menopause because you think of hot flashes, night sweats, mood swings, all that kind of stuff that we're familiar with. But the vaginal dryness and pain with sex isn't something that, you know, normally we discuss at the dinner table or comes up the same basic conversation. So it's not necessarily associated with menopause. And we know that menopause means 12 months without a cycle, without having a period. So we know my brain, my love, my brain. So the, it all starts in the brain, the hypothalamus and the pituitary, which are these glands right here in the brain. And the, those, the hypothalamus pituitary sends signals to different organs. So this is some of my sheets of my organs. And so you can see it actually sends a signal to the ovaries and in the men, it sends a signal to the testes. Well, over time, your ovary does not make eggs anymore. So it's not making these hormonal shifts that happen every month. So I don't know if that you can see that or not, but basically what normally happens each month with the fluctuations doesn't happen anymore. And the estrogen and progesterone levels drop precipitously. And that's what causes these vaginal effects, these vaginal uh, factors, the dryness and all these other things. So thanks all of you for joining. Oh my gosh, we got a lot of people. Yeah, and we're gonna talk about some of the things that we can do. So some of you already given comments. So great, appreciate that. So I hope that makes some sense that what happens is with menopause, we have no more cycles as women. And so we have much less estrogen. And that estrogen causes a lot of these symptoms to occur. The hot flashes, night sweats, mood swings. But over time, let's say a year, six months to a year out, that's when the vaginal dryness starts and the pain with intercourse. So a lot of women may not associate that necessarily with menopause. So let's go over some of the reasons why only 7% of women who are of menopausal age and half experience symptoms, only 7% seek treatment. So one is that, again, women may not recognize it's part of menopause because it tends to occur a little later, maybe like one to two years after the beginning of menopause. Um, they may not think that this is something that, that could be treated. They, you know, and that's why I love having these webinars and eventually I'll have my Amazing Over 40 website up that's going to give this information for women all over the world. So at their fingertips, they can say, what is this that's happening to my body? And men will know too because they don't understand kind of what's happening to their wife. So anyway, I don't want to get too far on that because I can get really passionate about that. So another reason would be that they, um, you know, it's a little embarrassing. <laughs> Most women are not going to bring up that they have vaginal dryness and pain with intercourse, and many physicians will not bring it up. That is, they won't initiate the discussion. So a lot of patients won't bring it up with their physical. Now, I, as an OBGYN, and having written books about sex drive, and and I actually talk a lot, like basic language, about these things, and I can discuss it for pretty freely, I ask my patients, all my patients, when they come in for their well woman exam or for whatever exam they're coming, and I say, are you having any pain with intercourse? Are there any problems that you're having? So that it can initiate the discussion. And women really appreciate that because if you don't discuss it and you don't bring it up as a healthcare provider, the patient most likely won't bring it up either. So it's really important to know that. And then also, let's see, the last thing was that, yes, Women sometimes get worried about some of the treatments like estrogen and they think that estrogen is something horrible and they run for the hills thinking it causes breast cancer, stroke, heart attack, all those things. So this is different than systemic hormone therapy and I'll get into that a little bit more. And um, so with those great comments here, wow, only 7%. Yeah, it's really sad. Only 7% of women who are having these symptoms actually get treatment. It's craziness, really. It's really crazy. And the other thing I want to make sure that we make a point of is that this type of what we call vulval vaginal atrophy, horrible term, vaginal dryness due to this, this vaginal walls really thinning. So this is another diagram, and this I like a lot because I hope you can see it as best as possible. This is the uterus. This is the vagina. Now this is on the, this side over here, that's a premenopausal woman. So you can see how the vaginal tissues are much more pink. They have these little folds called rugae. They distend, they lubricate. It's, it's much different tissue. Now when the estrogen goes down with menopause, you can see it gets paler, it gets much more thin. It can be loss of the folds. So it could be painful, dry, irritated. It gets shorter, the vaginal length. And basically when that happens, a lot of women say, I don't want to have sex. It hurts too much. And men will say, well, I don't want to hurt them. So they it can cause a lot of issues, not just with intimacy, 
but also with well-being and feeling like a woman. So my goal tonight is really to break the barrier, break the taboo about this and start talking about it and know that there's things you can do for this. So I hope that's a nice diagram for you to see how the tissues change and that's what causes these symptoms to arise. So let's talk about some of the ways that you can treat this. Now there's over the counter like moisturizers and there's obviously lubricants. Uh, Sherry had a great comment about coconut oil. Coconut oil is a great lubricant. It is antibacterial and antifungal and you can use it all over your body and even in the vaginal tissues. So coconut oil is great. There's something called Replens, which is a vaginal moisturizer that can help somewhat with the tissues. But to be honest, the best is really gonna be what I'm gonna discuss now. And I'm gonna mention the six FDA approved drugs presently available. There's also compounding medications you can do, which I have for some of my patients. But I wanted to focus tonight just on the, what's approved now that you can talk to your doctor about. Obviously, if you have other questions and you wanna seek um, some advice from me, please feel free. Go to my, my drdianahoppy.com site and post a comment or a question and we'll definitely get address it and make sure that we cover it. So let me see what else, yep, use it or lose it, that's true. So when more blood flow comes to the vagina, so the more you have sex, the more blood flow comes to the vaginal walls. The more blood flow means more lubrication. So yes, if you're not having much sex and you're having sex maybe let's say once a month, it's gonna maybe hurt versus if you're having sex a few times a week. Now, sometimes that's not possible or the relationship's strained, but basically, yes, use it or lose it is a true fact. So let me go over, and this is a little graph that I'm gonna cover the different um, products that are available. So I have a lot of show and tell. I love this tonight because I love my little visual aids. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is creams. So this is Estrace cream. So Estrace is a cream and it's used with a little applicator. And you, this is a sample. And basically you use the applicator and you put about a quarter of a applicator full every night for two weeks and then twice a week thereafter. So that is an estrogen cream. So it's estradiol. And a lot of women will say, oh my gosh, it's estrogen. It's not good. I'm going to get breast cancer, et cetera. And, and on the PIs, I think I have a PI, yes. On my visual aids. So if you actually open the PI of these drugs, it's going to say that estrogen causes stroke, heart attack, breast cancer, and all these things. What the problem is the FDA mandates that they put this on the label in the, in the package insert, but it's very different. Basically that whole study will have its own issues, but vaginal estrogen that's for pain with intercourse or atrophy is very different than systemic vaginal estrogen. So when sometimes I give um, samples out and my patients will say, I don't want to take it because it says it causes breast cancer and, and stroke. But the amount of estrogen levels that are in the blood are very, very low and it stays in the vagina basically. It doesn't go into your bloodstream and cause other symptoms to happen. So the first I mentioned was estrogen cream with the applicator. The next is Premarin cream. So Premarin cream, oh, I can see, oh, you can see that now. Premarin vaginal cream is um, another cream with an applicator. Hey, we got a lot of people, Vincent, Bonnie, Dolores, Peg, yes. Thank you guys, this is cool. So Premarin vaginal cream comes with the applicator. Same thing as with the Estrace cream. Then there's something called, well, E-string or S-string. I always pronounce it kind of wrong, but there's different ways to pronounce it basically. And so E-string is a vaginal ring that can stay in the vagina for three months. And it basically just lays in the vagina and stays there. And if it bothers you or your partner with sex, you just take it out. But it's pretty cool because you don't have to do anything. You don't have to use the applicator. So for some women, they really, really like that, that method. Then there's also something called Vagifem. And let's see if I can get that in. Ah, there we go. So Vagifem is an applicator with a little tablet. And that is a tablet that you insert into the vagina. And that is also the same as the cream in that it's every night for 14 days and then twice a week thereafter. So Danny says, thank you. Happy birthday. Yes, today is my birthday. And you're wondering, why am I doing this on my birthday? Well, it's because I really have a passion for teaching and, and educating, and I love doing these kind of things. And I thought, and I went to work today too. It, it's just because I love what I do. So it's kind of like, why would I not do this on my birthday? And, I, and I'm only turning 30, by the way. <laughs> I'm not 30, but you don't need to know my real age. It's okay. So thank you, Danny, for that. And I'm sure you're going to put the site up for the Indiegogo campaign during the presentation here. 
So the next one, so those were all vaginal, right? We talked about the ring, the cream, and the Vagifem tablets. So those are all vaginal insertion. What's new is called Asfina. Asfina is an oral tablet. So you take this orally with food and basically once a day, and this works like on the receptor. So it's called a selective estrogen receptor modulator. It's not a hormone. It actually works on the receptor and helps with vaginal dryness. So it's got approval for what we call dyspareunia or pain with intercourse. So this is an oral. So if you feel better with that, that's absolutely fine. That's called Asfina. And something new that just came out, and this is a um, precursor of DHEA for an adrenal hormone, and I hope you can see it. It's called Intrarosa. And Intrarosa is a precursor of DHEA, and that comes with little applicators, the same thing as like the creams. So Intrarosa is not estrogen. It, it works as probably some effect with estrogen as well as androgen receptors in the vaginal tissues. So it really works to help again with vaginal dryness, pain with intercourse. And these are just six of the FDA approved things. So there's so much out there now. And I feel so bad for those women who don't discuss this with their doctor because there's something we can do about it. And so many women are suffering from it. 64 million postmenopausal women in the United States. 32 million have symptoms of this, of vaginal atrophy, and only 7% get treated. So that's kind of why I made a special Tuesday night for us tonight, because I thought, you know, even if you can't join me live, at least you can share it with your friends and, and basically listen to the recording, because it's really, it's really phenomenal what we have available now and what can be discussed. So what I want to do now is kind of look at some of the questions that people have. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. The peg is so funny. She's a sweet pea. She's so funny. She's from South Carolina, North Carolina. She, well, she's from out there and she's always so cute with her little things. So let me see if there's any questions that you have. Um, basically, it's a, it's a pretty simple complex concept in the sense of it has to do with estrogen levels dropping. And we know with menopause, estrogen levels drop. And at first, we have hot flashes, night sweats, mood swings, and things like that. But over time, vaginal dryness can be a real concern. So just to give you some thoughts about what you can ask your doctor about or what you can research. And what I'd like to bring up now is, yes, it's my birthday, and I'm doing a Facebook Live. And again, this is what I love to do. And I am launching a new website, a new online platform for women and men. So the men who have joined here, you can also access it because it's going to help you understand your woman, your wife, your partner, what's happening with her. And women will be able to understand what's happening with their bodies. Because like vaginal dryness and pain with sex, people aren't talking about it. People don't talk about menopause. They don't talk about perimenopause. They don't talk about this. And many doctors will say, just take an antidepressant or just deal with it. It's part of aging. So please go to my Indiegogo campaign called Amazing Over 40 and contribute to the campaign. And it could be whatever amount you can. It could be $5, $10, 15. We have different perks, so different things you get. So when you actually contribute, you get a, a nice perk like chocolate chocolates, you get some moisturizers. And actually on Thursday, I'm gonna have a great guest with me uh, Laura Stern, she is with um, Just True Essentials, and we're going to talk about all natural oils that you can use for your body and why personal products are full of chemicals. So that's, sorry, that's Thursday night. I was kind of getting ahead of myself because I was so excited. But if you can go to the site, the Indiegogo site that's here on the comment section, and just look at the perks and contribute whatever you can, whatever amount that you feel good about, but that's going to allow me to make the website, get the back end, put all the information up so that you, as well as other women and men worldwide, will have this information. And it's gonna be called Amazing Over 40 because it's for you to feel amazing over 40, 50, 60, and beyond. So I'm really excited about it. Uh, we launched on the 10th, and so it's gonna be a 30-day campaign. So I really, if you can donate and contribute and share this with your friends and colleagues, family, I totally appreciate it because that will help me out as well as all of you that are joining me tonight and those that will hopefully listen on the recording and future. So with that, let me see if there's any comments or questions to make sure. Um, yeah, social media, if you can share it on your Facebook. And Danny said, um, 
she already backed the campaign, so thank you so much for doing that. I really thank you for, for joining me. And let's see, Sherry, thank you for happy birthday wishes. Oh, there's also about testosterone. Um, that's not FDA approved. So testosterone normally is used for libido, not necessarily for vaginal dryness. So when we think about vaginal dryness, we think more of estrogen products and now the DHEA precursor called intrarosa. Intrarosa. I hope you can see that. So that is a DHEA precursor, which is an androgen. So testosterone, great question, but testosterone in general is used for libido. So you can apply testosterone to the vaginal area and that may help with absorption so you get more systemic, but um, definitely it's not necessarily wrong to use some testosterone in the vaginal area. It's just, I think the, the estrogen and the other androgens work a little bit better for that. Uh, let's see, let's see, we have, oh my gosh, lots of questions. Only 7%. Yes, it's so sad when you think about that women's health and we're not getting the information uh, presently in our administration. We're having some issues with women's health and that a lot of the funds, a lot of the education, a lot of the things for women are going, how do you say, not being as funded as they were previously. So that's what makes me even more passionate about having my online site because it's gonna be a community. It's gonna be a place where women and men can go together. And we probably have separate Facebook pages because I think men have their own kind of subset of questions and women have theirs. And the men probably wondering what's happening to my wife and the woman saying, what's happening to my body? So it's really gonna be cool in that it's gonna be community. We're gonna have retreats, we're gonna have webinars, we're gonna have modules so that you can watch this at any time of day or night. So if you're having a hot flash or your night sweats and you're waking up at three in the morning, you can actually go online and go to the site and get questions answered. So we don't sometimes have time with our doctor. We don't have time to get into the doctor, much less when you go, you might have seven minutes with your doctor. So that's where I felt compelled, literally compelled to do this. And Facebook Live is one forum, I think is great to disseminate information, but those who can't join me or can't look at the recorded, I thought having an online platform would be incredible. And I, miss, I mentioned initially about the Women's Health Initiative. That's something that was very, how would you say, misinterpreted. And that's something that I talk about every day with my patients. And I will have information, modules, free information about the Women's Health Initiative and really what it meant and what the implications were from that study. So that's one of my propelling reasons, the impetus of also why I am doing this site because there's so much misinformation out there and some of the doctors unfortunately don't take time to explain what the study was, what it meant and how you as an individual really need to be treated because you are unique. And the thing is you're not alone. There's so many women going through this. So let me see if there's any closing comments here. We've got some great people joining. We talked about coconut oil. It's a great lubricant and let's see. Yes, we got the site up. Awesome. I'm just, I'm sorry, I should have gone this way. Um, how long can we use these products? Great question. So when, because your estrogen drops and because with menopause, you're not cycling, you're not making estrogen and it's never going to really come back. We're only supposed to live till 50. We're really not supposed to live this long. So before the 1900s, we lived to about 50 and our ovaries pretty much menopause about 50, 51. So now we live to 84. So we have about 30 years in menopause. And so what are you gonna do with vaginal dryness, hot flashes, all those symptoms? Well, for the vaginal dryness, if you stop using, let's say the cream, you stop using the cream, it's going to go back to where it was before. So if you want to keep your vaginal tissues supple, um, lubricated, not hurting, not have pain with sex, not have pain when you urinate and be kind of like irritated, then you want to continue this for as long as you pretty much want to be comfortable. And it's a very small amount, so it really stays in the vaginal tissues. It's not going what we call in the body or systemic. So I have women in their 80s and 90s who are still using their, their creams, their Vagifem tablets, their Intrarosa tablets, their Ospina, whatever they're choosing to use, they're still having those, even though they may not be sexually active, but they have symptoms of dryness. So Great question because yes, you need to keep using this continuously if you wanna have those effects in the vaginal tissues. So great, great question, thank you. 
and I have Faith just joined. She likes Asfina. Asfina is the one I mentioned that's a tablet that is oral. So if you don't want to do something vaginal, like some women I show, it's funny, I show the ring to them in the office, the East ring, and they say, ooh, why would you put that in the vaginal tissue? You know, why would you put that in there? And how does it stay in there? What well, does, because the vagina is actually a level, level field, let's say, and so it's not going to come out. So that's, it's really pretty cool, but you have to be into that concept. But um, yeah, so Asfina is great. You know, basically what works for you is what you need to continue doing. And that's why having a discussion with your doctor about, or your practitioner, whoever you're seeing, and hopefully they're comfortable discussing this. And then you can say, well, what, you know, what, what's the best for me? What do I feel comfortable with? I normally ask patients, like, do they like the cream? Do you like the concept of a ring? If they don't feel like they, or a tablet with the Vagifem, if they don't feel com comfortable with something vaginally, then I say, do you want to do something oral like Asfina? Um, and the intravagal also is vaginal. So the only thing that's not intravaginal is the Asfina, which is the oral tablet. And that just got FDA approved just a few years ago. So the cool thing is we have a lot of products, a lot of things available to us. And so please make sure you talk to your doctor about these things. If you can do me a favor tonight for my birthday, go to the Indiegogo site, whatever you can contribute. I totally would appreciate it. It's going to help all of you and women across the world, as well as I said, as men, so they understand their women a little better. And it's really so that we, we can stay the best informed and empowered because we know that knowledge is power. So I feel like I've talked for endless here. And Faith, thank you for your comments. Jolene, thanks for joining. And yes, Sherry was saying how her mom, I'm sorry, her grandmother uh, was 82. She still was using the product. So yeah, I have women in you know 80s who are still sexually active. So and their husband, you know, they have a good relationship. So it doesn't have to be a problem. It can actually be something that we can take care of. So hopefully we can take that 7% that are being treated and make it up to like 50% who want at least some ideas of what available for them so that those 32 million women who are suffering from this of the 64 million postmenopausal women, we're going to be able to access and really be able to treat and help. So with that, I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Please go to the site if you have time and check it out. The Indiegogo, um, we posted it here on the comment site, so you can just click on it. And anything you can do, I totally appreciate. And Thursday night at 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I'm going to have Laura Stern. She's the CEO of Just Essentials Oils. And she's going to talk about her products and natural products and what's in a lot of the personal products that we use, the chemicals, the lubricants, a lot of stuff that you really don't want in your body. So we're going to have a really great discussion on that. So please join me for that. That's Thursday. So two nights from now at 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So with that, I'm going to say bye to everyone. Danny can't wait. I'll be there. Yes, no one should suffer. A absolutely. And, and so there's no need to have pain when there's so much that we can do. So with that, I'm going to end. I thank all of you for joining me tonight. I'm, I'm so happy that I so many comments, so many questions. And please join me on Thursday night. Have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you on Thursday. Take care.